autistic people can cover up that they're autistic, then surely couldn't we say that everyone on Earth is autistic and we're all just covering it up? When I first seriously started thinking that I might be autistic, I heard about this concept of masking and my initial reaction to it, because I think in the beginning you have loads of imposter syndrome, you feel like I can't possibly be autistic, I'm just attention seeking, I just want to feel special. I thought to myself seriously, which sounds ridiculous now, well if autistic people can cover up that they're autistic, then surely couldn't we say that everyone on earth is autistic and we're all just covering it up. I just felt like if you were truly autistic you wouldn't be able to hide it, you know, it would just be there and it would be obvious and people would already know and I think that's how a lot of people who don't know a lot about autism and a lot of medical professionals as well. We just kind of assume that autism is one thing, little boy likes Thomas the Tank Engine a lot. One of the things that made me think, okay no, I think masking is a thing and you are autistic is when I took this masking test on the website Embrace Autism, it's called the Cap Q. I then asked a few introverted people in my life who I felt like we had a quite similar social experience to each other, it seemed like that on surface level, to do the quiz as well, and then we compared our results. And I was like, mind blown, okay. So I'm gonna do the cat cue with you today and talk through my answers. If you haven't done it yet and you're kind of earlier on in your journey of self-discovery, feel free to click the link in the description and do it along with me. So the first one is, when I am interacting with somebody, I deliberately copy their body language or facial expressions. So it's difficult to kind of know when you're answering these questions. Are you answering for like now? Because right now I've been on this earth for 26 years and I have kind of already, you know, picked up a lot of information about how to socialise. I suppose everybody has to do that to some extent, you know, we aren't immediately born know exactly how to socialise, I just think for some people it's easier and maybe more intuitive to pick it up, it's not like on a conscious level like you're taking notes almost of how other people interact. But yes, I definitely do still do this, I do quite a lot of mirroring, like consciously in my head I'll be like, ah okay they're doing that, I notice a lot of little things that other people are doing with their body or their faces and then I will sometimes try to emulate that. I'm gonna say somewhat agree with that one. Number two, I monitor my body language language or facial expressions so that I appear relaxed. Ah, that's, that's G, that's strongly agree. <laughs> when I see that I'm like yes. <laughs> it's like you're aware of every little thing that you do in an interaction, you're being really careful about it all but then on top of it you're like look normal, look normal. <laughs> Unless I'm with someone I'm very comfortable with, I don't just automatically feel relaxed, it's a conscious effort to make myself look relaxed. Even it can be people who I get on with pretty well and I really like, something in my brain is like on overdrive. Number three, I rarely feel the need to put on an act in order to get through a social situation. I am going to say I strongly disagree with that. I feel like I am putting on an act in most social situations, which is really sad to say. It's not to say that necessarily none of myself is in that, but it just feels like everything I do has to be very conscious. So I suppose if I was playing a character, if you were acting in a play, you'd probably be very careful about, you know, what you were doing with your face and your body language and trying to stay in character. And I suppose it is like that. It's like trying to be appropriate, trying to be likable. What would a likable person do? What would the kind of person who was good at socialising do and having that conscious effort all the time so it always feels difficult. Difficult with this one, have I developed a script for social situations? I recently posted a video about masking and signs of masking and kind of what masking feels like from the inside and in that video I did say that before I go and do a filming job because I run a videography business I will write out questions that I can ask my clients, just generally like making conversation, things that I would genuinely be interested in to talk to someone about, just writing those down you know, then I kind of store them in my brain, I just feel prepared, I have something ready to say, I know I'm not just gonna blurt out something really stupid and then regret it because sometimes if I just leave my mouth to go it's just like blah, 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 blah. I panic, I don't want to silence, I kind of spit something out and it's just, it can't, it's not good, I mean it's not like I've said loads of offensive things by mistake but you know you can kind of cringe at kind of what you come out with sometimes somewhat agree. I think some people go a bit further with scripting, they full on have like, you know, when I meet someone I must say hello, then I must say how are you. I mean, I also did say in that other video that I kind of made a conscious decision at some point to start saying have a nice day at the end of interactions, so now I do say that when I remember to. <laughs> so I suppose that kind of is a script as well, like I've consciously decided it's not like second nature even though I've been saying it for a while, it still does feel like it's a conscious choice every time I say it, like, oh yeah, that's a thing that people would say if that makes sense. You can't really script too much, can you? Because people are gonna say things that you've not prepared for and then it will kind of all 
crumble and fall apart. I will repeat phrases that I've heard others say in the exact same way I first heard them. So this is kind of like I just said about the have a nice day. Obviously I've heard people say it, I can't remember like one specific time where I heard someone say it and then I went I'm gonna say that now and I can't think of like it, like repeating it in exactly the same way with like the same inflections maybe like other people might do that I don't know hmm what do you think about that one I feel like I need to come back to that when I finish my exam paper and then decide mm, do I repeat phrases in the exact it does say in the exact same way I first heard them I might say somewhat disagree with that Mm. Tricky sometimes with the nuance. I adjust my body language or facial expressions so that I appear interested by the person I am interacting with. Strongly agree. So this doesn't mean that I'm not interested. I mean, maybe sometimes, you know, I'd rather be working on things that I'm very interested in. But even if I'm interested, it's just like, does my face accurately reflect what's on the inside? Am I externalizing that emotion to an appropriate level? Making sure you don't look bored and flat and you know, you look animated enough for the other person to understand. I think I can be a bit maybe over the top with my facial expressions and they just, there's something a little bit odd and I often get a face <laughs> from people which I read as like, there's something different, but I can't put my finger on it. So I'm just gonna smile. So those people will like mock gestures that I've done and look like, mildly bemused and I'm like uh, yeah I get that a lot <laughs> and I never understood why until autism. In social situations I feel like I'm performing rather than being myself. Strongly 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 agree. A while before I started seriously considering that I might be autistic I remember thinking why can't you just be yourself in social situations? It's so weird and why can't you just be yourself? Why can't you just relax? Why are you so different when you're in social situations? Because I didn't like it. It felt like oh you're being false. Why are, you, why are you doing that? And then I looked at myself when I'm on my own and comfortable I sit stupidly in chairs. I have my legs up, I sit in, you know, not ladylike positions sometimes. If I've just edited something and I'm watching it over, I will like rock back and forth and flap something. I can be very bouncy sometimes, like in my movements, I can kind of like jump around and skip from, from room to room in like weird ways that I wouldn't want to do in front of other people. I can also be like quite flat in my expressions like I'm just usually focused on doing something and like I'm not worrying about my face so my face probably looks kind of pissed off a lot of the time if I'm with someone that I'm comfortable with as well and it's just me and them at home and like say my husband was making a stupid noise or he was playing a video on his phone out loud then <laughs> I would say something about it and I would vocalize that something was bothering me whereas you can't really do that in a lot of social situations. I hate whistling, it goes through me, it makes me feel anger panic basically. I can't say that to a stranger or someone I don't know very well, like I'd find it difficult to just, I don't want to be mean, even my husband takes it personally sometimes. I'm like it's not personal, I wish it didn't happen to me but something happens to my insides when you do that, I 100%, I, I can't be myself, I can't stim and I don't sit stupidly. I feel like I'm in a straight jacket. Number eight, in my own social interactions, I use behaviors that I have learned from watching other people interacting. Mm. Now this is the tricky one. You kind of feel tempted to be like, but doesn't everybody do this? And it's like, yes, but I suppose to what extent? I mean, I suppose the have a nice day is, is that a behavior? That's a phrase. I suppose saying the phrase is a behavior. So I could somewhat agree with that. It's so difficult, it's so difficult to know. I suppose, yes, yeah, smiling a lot, laughing a lot at things, being overtly enthusiastic about things in life. I'm not saying that I'm never enthusiastic about anything. <laughs> It's funny because I feel embarrassed that I'm not being enthusiastic enough in some situations and sometimes I'll jump up and down and clap with excitement and then I feel embarrassed of that because that's too enthusiastic and it's like, I suppose, yeah, it's just about what's appropriate and what's matching the, the feelings of the other people you're with. Man, if only we didn't have to overthink these things. I suppose I'll somewhat agree. I do often watch and analyze extroverted people particularly and think, oh, I like what they're doing there. I wonder if I could be like that. Or wouldn't it be good if I could be that person? How can I be her? And then, you know, proceed to try and do that. I always think about the impression I make on other people. Yes, strongly agree. I wish I didn't care what other people think thought, think, whatever of me, but I do very deeply. I was picked on a lot at school. I really like it when Emily comes because I don't really have many other people come because I don't really have a lot of friends. I don't really make friends very easily. And besides, I don't really need any more than like one good friend. It just means that school's a bit harder because Emily doesn't go to my school. And Emily is two years younger than me. You probably didn't know that because you can't really tell. We're cousins, but we are like best friends and 
I don't really know who I'd talk to if it wasn't Emily there. Everybody at school seems to know who she is. Some people at school say, come up to me and ask me, are you best friends with your cousin? Like, finding it absolutely hilarious, some girls at school. And I was like, how do they know her? And I don't know how they know her. And how old is she? She's two years younger. And then that was even more funny, you know, because, you know, you can't be best friends with cousins because they're not people, really. There were phases where it was kind of bullying ish and like I had my lunch thrown across the floor and things like that just randomly in a changing room in a PE lesson the person didn't like she was pretty neutral to me most of the time it was very strange I, I don't understand what happened there what had inspired it whether she just wanted to show off to other people yeah that was pretty hideous <laughs> that makes me feel really sad yeah primary school people just told me I was weird a lot like, I think it was just more ostracized like I just felt like I was on the edge of course that's gonna be traumatizing going somewhere where constantly all day you're criticized for every little thing that you do and your appearance and everything that's wrong with you it's it's hell high school's hell for everybody but if you're autistic like what chance do you have really? I mean, maybe that's why I care so much about what other people think of me because I mean, of course we do. It's like survival, isn't it? Number 10, I need the support of other people in order to socialize. So sometimes I actually prefer to socialize on my own. Say if I went somewhere with my husband, I sometimes feel like if I have a bad social interaction and he overhears it, it's double the embarrassment because someone's heard it. Whereas if it's just me on my own, if I embarrass myself, no one has to know about it and if I never see the person I've interacted with again then like literally it's just between me and that person and they'll probably just forget. Like if we're socialising together I definitely do feel less comfortable when he leaves the room. As a child I needed my mom in order to socialise. I'd often rely on adults to socialise for me until I was probably kind of too old for that I suppose too old for that. There was a time where I was with my dad and we were at a supermarket and another family member was there. They said hello and I didn't know them very well and my dad said hello and he spoke to them and then afterwards I kind of got in trouble because I hadn't said hello myself and at the time I just seriously hadn't even thought that I was being rude by not saying hello. It just never crossed my mind. I think because my parents were separated I spent most of the time with my mom. My mom would never have expected me to interact. She often did a lot of things on my behalf and accommodated for me even though she didn't know I was autistic which is pretty amazing. She made my life so much easier and I feel so lucky to have her. Hopefully I can get her on a video. Like, I just felt like my dad speaking was enough. Like I didn't need to speak, he could do it for me. Now like most of the time I would be more comfortable doing things with my husband. I, I just prefer it because I just like him. <laughs> I like being with him. You know, we do all the my filming jobs. He comes with me, does all the filming jobs with me because we need an extra person, not just to babysit me. Like he does actually film himself as well. I'm gonna say somewhat agree. Sometimes I do prefer to experience the embarrassment alone. <laughs> 11, I practice my facial expressions and body language to make sure they look natural. I said this in the masking video. I quite like Zoom calls sometimes because I had like an interview thing over Zoom and I could look at my own face and I could check if I looked engaged in the conversation and like animated and it was fabulous and I could edit my face and I loved it. So definitely this applies to me. I've definitely practiced in the mirror and body language to make sure I look natural. I mean, just like no matter what I do with my body, I always feel like I look unnatural. I look like I have no idea what to do with my limbs. Am I gonna say strongly agree or am I just gonna ag agree? Cause it's not like I do it every day, like before every interaction, but I definitely have done it. I might strongly agree. I might strongly agree. Number 12 is I don't feel the need to make eye contact with other people if I don't want to. So I would say disagree or strongly disagree. Around people, now who know that I am autistic then I don't feel the need to know. A while before I realised I was autistic I noticed that I don't really look at my mum when I speak to her. For a while that kind of stressed me out because I thought like is there something wrong with our relationship but now I think I just realised I'm just super comfortable with her so I don't and me and my husband I mean often when we talk we're like kind of doing household chores <laughs> like we're not often sat across from each other like I'm gonna somewhat disagree I think I, I do feel the need to make eye contact. If it was a job interview, then I would strongly disagree. So that's kind of a tricky one. Maybe I'll just put disagree. I do feel like I know it's important to do. I'm not sure if I'm always that good at it, I suppose. I have to force myself to interact with people when I'm in social situations. I would say agree, maybe strongly agree. Even when I want to, it often feels like an effort, like it's a forcing words out of me. I'd always feel like there was a voice in my head shouting like, you should talk to them. A normal person would talk to them and I would feel pressure. Whereas I've noticed some of my introverted friends and family members, they accept that they're a quiet person and they don't love talking to people all the time. And they're just kind of okay with that. And that isn't me. I feel like there is pressure 
for me to socialize and kind of prove myself. 14, I have tried to improve my understanding of social skills by watching other people. Yes, I would agree, I have done, like I say, watching extroverted people for sure. 15, I monitor my body language or facial expressions so that I appear interested by the person I'm interacting with, strongly agree. 16, when in social situations, I try to find ways to avoid interacting with others, agree. I do, the more comfortable I am with somebody. Like some people, normally if they're neurodivergent themselves or if they're just neurotypical, but very, very accepting, warm, kind, and I know them very well, then it's less so. But yeah, there are certainly times where I kind of look for an escape. I would often in college, I would hide in toilet cubicles for a bit to get some like respite <laughs> from the whole situation. And I would also go to the library, try and hide in there before I ran into anyone that I knew and then not have to speak to anyone because the library was like silence. <laughs> I have researched the rules of social interactions to improve my own social schools. Have I, schools? Skills. Somewhat disagree, have I researched the rules a bit? on like an academic level. I mean, I suppose I have in terms of like, is it appropriate to wear this in this situation? <laughs> you know, but I feel like lots of people have done that. So I don't know, I might say somewhat disagree. I don't know if I can think of times where I have research, like is X appropriate and whatever. I kind of more watch other people and then fumble around and trial and error than actively research it. I've always thought I should read that how to win friends and influence people book, I always thought, oh, you need that. <laughs> but I've never actually read it. So I suppose, nah, I'm gonna somewhat disagree. I am always aware of the impression I make on other people. I don't know what that means. Does that mean I always know what sort of impression I made on other people and whether it was negative or positive? Cause I'm not always sure and I usually assume it's negative. Or does it mean I'm always aware, like I'm always overthinking it? I would strongly agree with that if that is how it is. So I'll strongly agree cause I think that's it. 19, I feel free to be myself when I'm with other people, strongly, disagree no unless they're people I'm very close with which I don't know if that counts because they kind of feel like they're an extension of me almost you know like that's people I'm very very close with 20 I learn how people use their bodies and faces to interact by watching television or films or by reading fiction so I've never actively taken notes from watching tv programs and stuff I think when I've read other people discussing masking that they do this on more of a conscious level I never did that is that just because I'm lazy and I just didn't care all that much but then me and my husband a while ago did a quiz it was like a multiple choice and we had to say what emotion people were feeling based on their facial expressions, one of those stupid quizzes. We kind of got similar scores. I was a bit lower than his, which is weird because I have a lot of attention to detail. So I'm like, that seems a bit like off and I suppose autism. <laughs> But I would picture if this person was in a scene in a movie, what sort of scene would that be? What would have just happened to them? What sort of music would be playing? And that was kind of my thought process. Whereas for him, there wasn't really a thought process. It was more intuitive, I think. Do I say somewhat agree? 21, I adjust my body language or facial expressions so that I appear relaxed, strongly agree. When talking to other people, I feel like conversation flows naturally with my husband, yes, with my mom. Yes, although it's probably mostly me talking at her about things I'm interested in. Don't know if you'd call that natural. <laughs> natural for me. When people I don't know, I would say strongly disagree. It doesn't flow naturally. It might seem that way from the outside sometimes, but it feels, it's just a different level of consciousness and awareness of what's happening than I think other people have from how I understand it. Obviously, I'm not neurotypical, so I can't ever know what that experience is like. I've spent time learning social skills from television shows and films and try to use these in my interactions. So I'm gonna say I might strongly disagree because I don't think I've spent time doing that consciously. And that's what that sounds like to me. Skills from television shows and films. No, I don't, I don't think so. In social interactions, I do not pay attention to what my face or body are doing. Lol, I wish, <laughs> I cannot imagine what that is like. I feel this awful, uncomfortable sense of awareness. Ooh. 25, in social situations, I feel like I'm pretending to be normal. Yes, strongly agree because I was told my whole life that I was weird and I thought I was just being me because nobody, until I went to school, nobody criticized me. So why would I have thought I was weird? Score, let's find out. Is the autistic person autistic? Da 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 da, where are my scores? It says correlations, I thought it said congratulations. <laughs> I thought it was gonna congratulate me. Well done, you are autistic. So my total was 147. Yes, I don't know if that's good or not. Is there a good? No, there's not a good. Compensation, 40. Masking, 55. And ass assimilation, I can't speak, 52. So the average autistic total score is 124. Passed with flying colors. So compensation, I got 40. The neuro 
typical score is 27.18. Then for masking, I got a whopping 55 and the typical autistic is 37.87. Maybe I was a bit aggressive with my strongly agreeing, but I did feel strong about it. I was like, <gasps> yes. <laughs> Assimilation, I got 52. The average autistic score is 44.6 and the average neurotypical is 29. Autistic men don't camouflage much more than neurotypical men. Yes, I feel like when I look at my own family, because I am the only autistic female, yeah, there's a lot more overt, like, stuff. <laughs> That if you knew about autism, you'd be like, I, I see you. High CAT-Q scores can correlate with social anxiety in both autistics and neurotypicals with the exception of masking. In autistic people, the total CAT-Q score and the assimilation score negatively correlate with well-being. Oh, the higher your scores are on these measures, the lower your well-being tends to be. Oh dear. I'm quite happy right now. In neurotypical people, all cat Q scores negatively correlate with well-being. In autistic people, all cat Q scores correlated with depression and generalized anxiety. This wasn't tested for in the neurotypical group. If you like this video, you might like my previous one about how does masking feel from the inside. Thank you. Bye. Have a lovely day.